Hello, it's Blighty Otaku here once again with the second part of my Christmas pickups list because, well, while I could show everything on everything physical just through a camera, even with the Steam credit I purchased to do all of these, I can't really do anything. Yep, this is the only way I can actually do it. I'm rambling on again at if you can hear any other noise in the background that is well that is actually just the washing machine spinning down because my room is right near the kitchen not the shared kitchen because anyone who has watched the video about my brief the brief walkthrough of my new place will know that I do have something that attains to a kitchen in my room. Although the only thing I could do at the moment is make teas and coffees. And probably the odd set of uh, ramen noodles. <laughs> Though I don't have any of that. But, well, I'm actually getting off topic. And, well, as you can actually see up here... I only have one pound forty seven where I actually had at least forty seven pounds and this video is basically going to show you where all of that was spent, although one of the things I was gonna try and get was the extra the new d l c the war of the chosen d l c for xcom two unfortunately, that cost over twenty quid. And I really didn't want to be throwing that much away for a single product. So what I did was I looted my wish list. And, well, uh, in alphabetical order, well, yeah, because I really should have sorted that out before I'd gone live. In alphabetical order, this f the first one is Agarest Generations of War. And this, <laughs> just like Star Ocean and just like Blaze Blue, <sighs> Figures Crown Fantasia Extend. Uh, just one minute. So I'm not going to go back into Steam. Yeah, it is Crown Phantasma Extend. This is another one I actually purchased on the PlayStation 3, although if I remember, the I'm not sure if it was the American or the European release was censored. And I actually had the European release, but yeah. So this is practically my this is practically part of my task to actually have all of my PlayStation everything that's actually on PC from PlayStation on the PC from what I have on PlayStation 3 and hopefully other formats as well actually there, it, there are other formats on here as well uh, yep yeah. at the door on the tie yeah <laughs> yeah so you can choose paths to light the darkness or light spanning multiple generations so you end up having kids. That's very good. Yeah. Yeah. Very decent requirements. And it actually does run very well. Yeah. Probably something I might actually do a series on. If I ever get the hard drive space available, because I'm about down to 200 gigs a piece on each of the hard drives. So, yeah, and this, because I bought, because I just bought the standard, and I actually only brought the standard pack, standard version, and not the collectors. So you get a load of additional materials. And that was only four pound and thirty nine. 
number two is Eden and this was actually pretty much a blind purchase. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, because the only sort of like game series I really knew about from Min the developer Minori is the F A Tale of Memories and A Tale of Melodies, a series that I actually ended up dropping about three quarters of the way into A Tale of Melodies, though that was the anime, and I never even bothered touching the games. And this, as I said, pretty much blind purchase. Yeah, as they say, with these, with most of these visual novels, you really don't need a powerful system to run them. So, next on the list, well, it's a game I was originally intending to purchase on the PlayStation 3, but I actually played the demo, the Japanese demo for the Japanese release and I wasn't really too enthused about it but well it's on PC it was only 22.99 and well oh <laughs> yeah once again stupidity reigns and I actually forgot to sh I actually forgot to mention how much Eden actually cost and that was one pound and forty nine p, an absolute bargain, ninety percent off. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So two twenty nine. Though I could actually have grabbed a few, because I could actually have grabbed a few pieces of content alongside it, but. Well. I really didn't. I really wasn't the, uh. Yeah. Yeah, so Fairy Fencer F. There is actually a. second game to this. But. Well, as I said, this was actually this was actually a last-minute addition to the list. All right, and next one is an old uh, bollocks. Uh, let me try this. Uh, da, da, da. Yep. Yes. Next one was actually Final Fantasy VIII. This one was a right. This one was one of the ones that we were a pain to actually run because, well, you need an account. You need to register for it on Square Enix's site just to bloody play the thing. And it's something I really, really hate. Yeah, this goes back to face. <laughs> yep, stop being stupid. Yeah, so Final Fantasy VIII, because I actually have this on the original PlayStation. And I was actually surprised that the game's prime, the game's main intro, after you pretty much start a new game. Is actually only running at about 15 frames a second. And hasn't held up well. And quite frankly, I probably should have spent the money elsewhere and uh, emulated the PlayStation version with some better. 
with some enhancements for graphical for graphics. Max, yeah, so also has keyboard commands, something you don't really get on the PlayStation version, yeah, but minimal specs, but uh, very much amount of space. And if you want to hurt your eyes, uh, yeah, the next one. Is Galagon double piece? And yep, this was actually the other major pain in the ass to actually get running. And yes, I did grab a screenshot of a Shinobi who's stuck in the window. <laughs> yeah, the only reason why this is a real pain in the ass to actually get running. Is one, there's an issue in the character creation screen where if it if the game is running at max 60 frames per second or even higher, it will crash. And and there's other points in the game where it'll crash. Primar primarily in those cases due to the fact that this has a older version of the scale form game engine which doesn't like multi-threading even though its minimum requirements call for dual cores and quad cores. I mean isn't that bloody stupid when your game engine is completely and utterly hosed by multi-core processors. The only way you can the only way you can actually get it past the character select is to limit the frame rate to 30 and all the others you have to actually turn off multi threading by using the one thread command line argument when running the game but on that on the other side it well runs runs well even on my Celeron And I've already managed to get the Shinobu good ending, or should I say normal ending. Although something like this probably isn't worth doing any videos about. But yeah, I actually like this game. Now, I was actually originally going to get the original on the PlayStation 3, though finding that's going to be a right pain in the brains. Yep. So, let's jump into the next one. I forgot to mention Neptunia U Action Unleashed. And this is actually one of the two games where I actually purchased DLC alongside it, because, well, this only has two pieces of DLC. But yeah, twenty two ninety nine, and it adds another not it adds another notch in the rank of my I have to mention that Tunia game series collection. And once again, it runs perfectly normally on my Celeron, even though it requires a a three gigahertz i three. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll probably. And I'll, I'll probably do some videos on this as long as I don't end up getting hosed down by copyright ID claims. Yeah, I mean another ninety percent, huh? <laughs> yeah. Next one. Yep. The next two are also ones that I've actually purchased off the originally purchased for PlayStation 3 
And, well, as you can see, very heavily ugh, censored. Although, this is probably the version that has some of the extra, one of the extra mini games completely cut out. Mugen Souls. And this and this version actually runs a heck of a lot better than the PlayStation 3 version because every single time, even if you have it installed to the hard drive, you are waiting around for everything. <sighs> yep. Yeah, a bundle of free DLC. Huh. I could probably I could probably put a graphics card in my Core 2 Duo setup and actually run this on there. Yep. Yeah, it features free features a free roaming battle map. Not really, because you're still confined to a specific to you're, you're actually confined to specific specific areas and you have to go in a specific direction. So it is not free roaming. Yep. Yep. Turn everyone into your peons. Yep. And that five ninety nine, I actually didn't get any DLC because all the DLC I got was the bonus stuff you get. Yeah, you got a nice amount of bonus stuff. And that was for five ninety nine. I also purchased hmm. Yep. Mugen Souls Z the sequel. And also something I have on the PlayStation Three. Yep, so you go back to Lady Shushu. Continues our rest to contact the tour so it will make everyone and everything a peon. Yeah. And by compile ha that most people actually call them compile fart. Don't know why, but yeah. Yeah, but these two probably won't be something I would actually do videos about because of some of the content. Yep. I'm actually going to scroll that down because I think there's a very, mm. yeah. The next one, <laughs> yep. Go continue. View page is Neko Pala Volume Three. And before anyone asks, I actually have Volumes Zero, One, and Two already because I got them with the Seiki Project. Humble Bundle, along with a heck of a lot of stuff, and this, even though it says as suggestive content, these are all very for, these are the all ages versions, this is the all age version. If you want the adult content, you have to pay more. I paid five pound twenty-four. I probably have to pay about another six quid to actually get the adult content patch. Although I haven't really gotten that yet. Yeah, it's volume one. Volume Zero, because Volume Zero is actually a fan disc for Volume One. Volume Two, because I already had these three, and Volume Three. And what I actually did to save a bit of money was I, instead of actually purchasing Volume Three as its standalone, it still offered it. It still offered the bundle, but it didn't offer this. 48% discount. I think it was about 32, 33% off. I only paid just over four quid 
by actually just using the <coughs> bundle offer instead of the standard vote instead of the standard order yeah, which is very uh, <laughs> yeah and next is another blind, <laughs> practical blind purchase is puns and Madles, tank dating simulator yep While the Japanese personified guns into girls, the Americans decide to turn tanks into girls and make a dating simulation about it. Yeah, and actually, this is done by Americans. Yeah, because you've got the M4 Sherman who blows off all the time, who blows up and sets fires. The Type 3 Chinu, who doesn't think a lol tractor should be student council president, and a T-34 is a bit of a sundare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you're, you're pretty, pretty, pr you are actually transferred to a prestigious military academy, but it's not a tank school. A uh, tank school for World War Two tanks. What happens to look like Japanese high school girls. <laughs> yeah, it says features. Join the army. See the darkest depths of your frail existence with world crossed out. F meet fun and interesting tanks with people crossed out. Date them. Also, there's a beach episode because, well. You see the Tiger One, the swimsuit. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Alright. Next. Portal 2. Now, actually, the original Portal was what was actually my first Steam, my first game on the Steam platform. Because it, at the time it was being offered for nothing. And I said, yep, free game. <laughs> Might as well take it. And since, and because this was on for £1.49p, well, I thought, what the heck, I might as well just grab it. <laughs> yep. Yep, pretty much. You go through more tests after you somehow manage to uh, power GLaDOS back up and uh, she puts herself back together. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, but I mean, some parts of the start of this are very humorous, especially when he tries to breach the dock. Instead, he breaches, he hits a wall. <laughs> yeah, but I won't go any further into that. Yeah, and last but by no means least, the last purchase was Quantum Conundrum. And this also was one that I actually purchased a bit of DLC for. Well, because I didn't purchase the soundtrack. <sighs> so I only got the Desmond Debacle and the Ike Aramba DLC. Which I didn't actually have when I purchased, when I had the, when I actually got this on the PlayStation 3. And yep, and this is a, another one of the PlayStation 3 purchases which I now have on PC. Yep. Yeah, and this will probably be something that I actually do do a video on. Because it, at least, plays very well 
on the uh, hmm, on the celly. So here ends this little village. This little video. I've actually been rambling for about twenty-five minutes. It's now Boxing Day. <laughs> So, I'm going to wrap this up, get it uploaded, and, well, try and get something else done. Because I really do want to actually get a few things started. So, that's that. That's that. It's Blight now, this is Blighty Otaku, signing off. Until next time, I'll catch you later, and for those who are still celebrating when this goes live, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.